I don't even know him, but I miss him. Yo, I hit the jeweler, got some goals. I sold a little weed, but I could never sell my soul. And when I'm in LA, you find me out in little toe. Come up over with my ramen, I'ma need another blow. Let's go. It's Sophia, I'm a friend of mine. Hey guys, this is Joe Nuts. Do you guys remember Max Steele? No! Oh, really? You don't? Oh, would you like to remember it? No! Oh, too bad. I'm talking about it anyways. Max Steel is a 2016 superhero movie based on the 2013 toy line of the same name. Based on the 1999 toy line of the same name. It doesn't really matter though, since they might as well be two different toy lines. The original Max Steel is about spies or something, but the 2013 one is a superhero story. You're dead man, the grass. But that backflip though. I don't know, I'm not a Max Steel fan. But for some ungodly reason, they turned this 2013 toy line into a full movie. A movie that was released theatrically and nobody saw it. This movie has interested me for years. It's just so weird, it shouldn't exist and yet here it is. So one day, I did what everyone else does. I sucked off a homeless guy in an alleyway and I got a free copy of the movie. Don't worry, it wasn't gay, we had the Bruh. socks on. And believe it or not, this might actually be the worst superhero movie movie I've ever seen. It's, uh, it's a mess. So let's go ahead and watch Max Steel. What could possibly go wrong? Before we jump in, though, a word from our sponsor. Hey, you! Do you want to be big YouTuber? Uh, yeah, that would be epic. I've always wanted to make Sprite, Sprite Cranberry Cran meme compilation. Will, son, do you know how to edit? Uh, no, I don't. I use, uh, Windows Movie Maker. Hey, yo! Hey, yo. Did this kid just say he used Windows Movie Maker? Yeah, that's cringy as hell. I'm afraid you can't go sicko mode! Oh no, how will I ever be able to make dank vine compilations and go sicko mode now? Thankfully, I have the solution. Thanks to this video sponsor, Filmora 10. Filmora 10 is an easy to use editing program, and one that is surprisingly quite powerful. There are tons of titles and effects, and all of them look clean and professional. Look at this glitchy one I found. They even added keyframing to the latest version. It's keyframing, dude. I can move Jeff Keighley around, whoa! And believe it or not, you can get even more effects through the Filmstock's website, which are updated every week. That's a lot of effects, bro. Normally, my preferred editing program is Premiere Pro, but for that program, I'm paying around $240 a year, while Filmora 10 is a fraction of that price. So not only is it easy to use, but it's also affordable, and there's a trial version with no time limit, so you have no excuse to not try it out. So what are you waiting for? Go down below, click the link, and start editing away, you little munchkin. Okay, now uh, back to Max Steel. Our film opens with our main character, Max McGrath, on the roof, and he's moving into this house. He and his mom then talk about stuff. The uh, cable guy comes tomorrow. We should have internet. So I can finally use Discord then. Oh, finally, I can groom minor. I mean, uh, look at Big Chungus. Fresh start. Right. Fresh start number nine. Hey. I can still cancel the internet. This is how human talk. So Max goes upstairs and uh, does something, I don't know. He then looks at a picture, and for no reason he can demorph the TV. How he's able to do this is beyond me, I don't fucking know. Already, the superhero origin story sucks because I don't know how he got his powers. Cut to the water and that's it. And then the film starts. Oh yeah, good movie, it's a very good movie. Before I continue though, I want to praise one thing about this movie. I know, we're like five seconds in, just give me a minute to explain. I want to real quickly praise the visual of this movie. They're honestly way better than they have any right to be. The cinematography is excellent. The color grading is fantastic. A lot of times, the visuals look more like an indie high school film than an actual superhero movie. Visually, it's closer to a film like Hell or High Water than it is to Iron Man. And in a world where superhero films are either visually generic or way too desaturated, Max Steel feels honest to God refreshing. The only film I can think of that kind of comes close to this is Logan. It's a film that looks unlike any other superhero film. And it's honestly the best part of the movie. Too bad everything else is trash though. Anyways, uh, the back to the movie. So Max goes to this random place for no reason, but then he gets a call on his Windows phone. But he can't use his phone because he has powers and also he bought a Windows phone. Cut to Miller Grove. Max is riding his bike until a car almost hits him. Then he hits a fence and falls Bruh. over. Only at Miller Grove though! Bruh. Such yeah, a Miller Grove moment. Such Grove. a Miller Grove moment. Miller Grove moment. He then meets a, a woman. Yeah, I am. I do this every year. Only at Miller Grove, though. Max then arrives in class, and the teachers are like, You're not 
Jim McGrath's son, are you? That's about it. So Max looks at a picture of his dad, and he clenches his fist because he's angry. He then goes outside and looks at his hand, and then the girl from earlier picks him up even though she just met him, and this leads to riveting dialogue. This is a cool truck. Riding in the truck. I don't know how this movie managed to out fant for stick fant for stick, uh, but it did. The dialogue in this movie has zero charisma. Characters just kind of mumble their words to the point where the dialogue becomes background noise, and the dialogue they do have is super fucking uninteresting. I don't know how they did it, but this film out Death Stranding's Death Stranding. I guess you could say this is the first strand type film. So anyways, the woman fixes his bike and uh, that's about it. Max then goes home and apparently Bobby Kodak's in his house. I'm sure there will be no plot twist where he's the villain the whole time. You worked with my dad. That's right. And the main thing is we gotta put Shrek 2 back on the shelves. It's the only way. We then abruptly cut to a science lab. There are some guys playing ping pong, I guess. And then a thing happens, and then we abruptly cut back to the dinner scene. 25 mile radius. 15. No way. Oh yeah, you, you really want to see this, the fucking talking scene. He was a very special man, your father. Oh, I, I guess we're back at the lab now. So, uh, some stuff happens, I guess? And then we abruptly cut back to the dinner scene again. Why? We're just cutting to two completely random different scenes. Is it meant to be artsy? Well, it's not. It's fucking stupid. Okay, wow, well, so I have you to blame then. It's all my fault. What? They're still doing it! So the guy touches a thing and then the alarm goes off and then cut back to the dinner scene. That's literally how the film goes. I'm not shitting you. And once again, it's literally for no reason. Like, you know how Stranger Things had the cutaway between Barbara's death and the sex? Yes. Where it's meant to show Nancy's irresponsibility and also meant to make you feel terrible for Barb? Yeah, you don't see that in Max Steel. Instead, they just cut between two completely tonally contrasting scenes because... <laughs> So anyways, there are some soldiers and they get attacked and die. And they're all like, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Bravo, Charlie Call of Duty Black Ops. <laughs> Meanwhile, at dinner. Can you please stop doing that through a chair? You're going to break it. Yeah, uh, nothing happens. Meanwhile, at the military base, some weird thing breaks out, and then it goes through the roof, and then the lights go out. Ah! Ooh! Max then goes to the basement and then advertises spam. Uh, I'm not kidding. There is spam product placement in this movie. Well, you'll be relieved to know that we have plenty of spam. We love spam. Never expires. Whoa, guys, it's me, the Max Steel from the movie oh, Max no, Steel, no. telling you to buy some spam. More spam! Spam is 100% kosher, so With Ben Shapiro can eat it. Actually, uh, disclaimer, spam isn't kosher, so the Ben Shapiro can't eat it. So what are you waiting for? To eat some spam today? Crazy hamburger! Bobby Kodak then gives Max a business card. Door is always open. And that's about it. Max then goes on his gamer PC and rips off the scene from The Amazing Spider-Man. And then his PC shuts off, then he rage quits. So now he can come from his hand. How he's able to do so is beyond me. Cut back to Miller Grove. Max makes a vending machine come. And that's about it. He then plays with his hand sperm for a little bit. Then he goes back on his computer and looks up what? Yeah. Then he looks up what am I? Then he talks to his mom. I unpacked the cutest baby pictures of you today. I'm gonna frame the most embarrassing ones and stick them all over the house. It's really fucking boring. Why does everybody in this town know more about dad than I do? I talk about your dad all the time. No, you don't. I don't know anything about his past because you never talk about it. Why wouldn't you, though? You think he would know, judging by all the people that kiss his ass all the time. So why wouldn't he know at this point? Did I miss something? Maybe I did. I I'm kind of zoning out at this point. Anyways, cut to a restaurant. Now Max is on a date with the girl we barely know anything about, Poggers! <laughs> I named my truck. Riding in the truck. I know a secret about you, too. Uh, no, you I, are I, putting I, together a secret Star Wars costume! Max then gets a headache and runs to the bathroom. He then starts coming more out of his hands. And then for no reason, he runs to the woods because that's the only place he could think of, I guess. And then he super comes and then wakes up in his bed. How did he get in his bed? Never explain. Max then takes off his shirt and damn, he's got some hella hickeys, bruh. Getting all them bitches. He then closes the mirror and sees the ghost from Destiny behind him. Who Jump scares him like Golden Freddy. Ah! This is when we meet Steel. What are you, some kind of a robot? I am a parasitic- Ooh, that's really bad audio mixing. My name is, uh... Steel! 
He called me Steel. As in Max Steel. Who did? I don't remember. So I guess Steel has amnesia and he's also an alien or something. I don't I don't know. But he's here to protect Max and to be the ultra funny comedic relief. Oh god, my mom is coming. You have to hide. Is my mom dangerous? And now we're back in the woods and we get a massive exposition dump. You are gonna be generating that tachyon energy for the rest of your life, and that is all that I eat. Alright, I wanna know everything that you know right now. Okay. Apparently you don't realize how lucky you were that I was there yesterday to relieve you of your- This is not how you convey information. Okay, uh, well how about the energy, the tachyon stuff? But now some government guys are here and they're chasing after Max. So he runs away, has a cryptic flashback, and uh, more exposition happens. It was your memory. Why, why would I see one of your memories? See? I told you we are linked. Well, do I- Ultralinks? Is that what you are? Ultralinks? No. Max, those are very dangerous. <laughs> But uh-oh, the government guys are back. So naturally, what does our main character do? Go back to school. Yeah, I'm sure they won't find you there, buddy. He then bumps into the- Oh my goodness, it's Emo the Musical! This marks the second film in the Emo the Musical cinematic universe. So Max sees his big titty anime GF. But his goofy sidekick Steel makes it awkward. Okay, yeah, uh, this is boring. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah. Yeah. So Max leaves. My Zumba class. <laughs> They then hide under a bench. That girl creature must have put out some kind of mind control virus on you. We should probably kill her. What? Do a sim this initiates the ultra exciting talking scene. And you know what's crazy? We're almost 40 minutes into this movie, and there's been no actual superheroing. What makes matters worse is that barely anyone knows who Max Steel is. And by that, I of course mean people in real life. So, as a first impression, this is a really fucking bad one. It, honest to God, feels like a fantastic spiritual successor. I like it, could you? My big question is what makes Max Steel? different from the rest of the superheroes we see in the genre. Because so far, Max Steel just seems like a really boring version of Spider-Man. Here's hoping Max Steel fan 45 can help me out on this one. So Steel sees a picture in Max's backpack, and for some reason, they go to the place that Max was at earlier. And now Max is walking around, hoping that another flashback is triggered. If you don't remember any details, how do we trigger that memory thing that we had? This, of course, leads to Steel dumping exposition onto Max. I've been telling you, if we work together, we can harmonize. The the so that it'd be so, uh, long story short, Max has turbo energy now. Turbo energy! So now Max actually has superpowers. Not sure how he got them, but uh, he can control them now. Also, we are halfway done with the movie. Yeah, we only have like 45 minutes left and we haven't seen any superhero wing at all. Literally, all we've seen is bland dialogue scene after bland dialogue scene after bland dialogue scene. I'm not saying you can't have a more grounded superhero movie, but those movies tend to be, you know, interesting. Max Steel, in contrast, isn't interesting at all. The only somewhat memorable character is Steel, and it's only because he's the funny one. Otherwise, I honest to God couldn't tell you what any of these characters are like. Max's only personality is I miss my dad. His girlfriend's personality is woman. His mom's personality is mom. And so on and so forth. There's nothing to latch onto. Therefore, when two characters talk, I doze off. I'm gonna say this unironically, the Dark Knight Ballad of the N-Word had genuinely better dialogue. Bruce, don't make me recite Smash Mouth. It's muffin time. <laughs> So anyways, yeah, Max has, like, powers now. He then punches a wall and says the F word. There's then an epic training montage. Yeah, it happens. Max then jumps off of a really high thing, and he finally becomes a superhero. He finally has his super suit, and it's the most generic thing I've ever seen. He looks like one of the search results for a sci-fi soldier on Google Images. There's nothing memorable about him. He looks like a CGI superhero suit, number 500. Max then has a flashback for no reason, and it turns out Steel knows Max's dad. That was my dad. You knew my dad. I guess... I did. And there's also a tornado, but it's no ordinary tornado. That was no ordinary tornado, Max. That was an ultra light. Psycho Mantis. Max then goes home and remembers Bobby Kotick's business card. So he goes to meet Bobby Kotick, but his girlfriend almost runs over him. And she's all like, Wow, you're acting very cringy. But the IRS is chasing Max, so he has to run away from Miss Thought over here. So Max is then chased, and he and Steel argue. Okay, time to suit up. No, 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 no. We don't have the budget for that, Steel! So they split up, and uh, Steel does something. Damn. All units, 
units were completely disabled. Oh, that's uh, all it takes to be completely disabled. So Max runs into Sophia and he's all like, Sophia, I gotta get to Activision. So he jumps in the car and they escape and that's about it. Which leads to an incredibly action-packed talking scene. It's a long story. What's going on? Drink some monster. You're gonna need it. Tomorrow you're going sickle mode. Cut to Activision headquarters, a place full of lens flares, and for some reason, very few employees. Bobby Kodak then takes Max to his office, and Max is all like, what happened to my dad? I need to ask you about my dad. You're gonna need more COD points for that one, kid. This initiates yet another exciting talking scene. See this? What is it? It's a miniature prototype of a power core. It's a device that's capable of- Max then suddenly has a heart attack, causing him to run away in the goofiest way possible. Max! <laughs> He's just running. Cut to, uh, somewhere. Max is now on a railroad, I guess. But now there's a storm behind him and Max starts running again. Then he hides in a drain. Yo, that's drained. Drain game. And then the, uh, storm goes away for a little bit and that's about it. And then for no reason, there's a screaming woman in a broken car and then Max fixes her car with his cup hands and then, uh, she runs away. And that's about it. It bears zero plot significance, so I don't even know why it's here. This film is literally, at this point, just throwing scenes together and hoping something sticks. You're welcome! He then runs more and then goes inside a, a shed and then the shed blows up and it's all like <laughs> And then Max looks up and it's a, a giant fog monster Max is then dragged to it and then steel comes out of literally nowhere and Max turns into Max Steel Oh boy, this means finally a superhero fight scene, right? <laughs> Max, you are the worst superhero ever made. Time to go, time to go now! And then more running happens, whatever. And then Max gets dragged in again, but then turns out Steel helped Max blow it up or something, and now he's in the suit again. That's the ultra -lead. It's exposed. Shoot it. Go turbo! You gotta go sicko mode! So Max launches a thing at the creature, and it dies. And now he's suddenly out of the suit? I don't know. We need a cooler catch. Bruh. Max then walks up to the red eye thing, and it becomes Steel! What? Wait, that's you. What? Why is that you? This commences another random flashback where I guess Steel kills Max's dad or something. Yeah. Please! Trust me! You ain't from Michigan if you never done this before! <laughs> So now Max is angry and sad, and this leads to the emotional team conflict that I'd feel more emotion about if the characters were memorable. Yeah, my, my dad had energy too, and you, and you killed him for it. Stay away from me, Max. No, I said So Max keeps running, but uh-oh, the bad guys are at his house now. They then spot Max, and he runs away. He then goes to Sophia's house, even though he's never been to her house before at all. And Sophia's freaking out, but then Max touches her hand, and she's all like... Uh. What can I do? I need a phone, your truck, and a pair of rubber gloves. That is a Terminator 2 line. Goodbye, baby. So Max goes back to the old building again. Riding in the truck on the way to GameStop. Gonna get my copy of Call of Duty Black Ops. And he looks around for a bit, then goes downstairs. And then Sophia calls Max's mom, but it turns out Max's mom is running the bad guys the whole time. I am still the majority shareholder at Entech. So the only person you take orders from now is me. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Good. Now go find my son. Cut to Max in a, uh, laboratory place. He looks around for a bit and then sees the one thing that his dad was in. Whoa, poggers! Also, Steel is trapped inside of this thing and Max is like, no, Steel! And then Max has yet another flashback. So it turns out Max's dad, right here, was not killed by Steel. In fact, he was Steel's best friend. But instead, the real villain and the real traitor and the real person who killed Max's dad was Bobby Kotick the whole time. I did not see this coming at all guys and now i'm gonna drain you so this guy dies no no anyways back to max who is suddenly confronted by a mega man robot master bobby kodak man then grabs max and then beats the fuck out of him and then he's all like you're making this so easy for me you know what first i wasn't even sure that all right it's getting kind of generate. boring now and then max tries this thing <laughs> Thank you. Doesn't work too well. And then Bobby Kodak gloats some more, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You're my very own source of tech. Yeah. No, tack, tack. Yeah. So Bobby Kodak forces Max to go inside of this thing, and Max and Steel are all like, I'm sorry, Steel. Your father, he was my friend. <laughs> He chose to protect. But then, in a shock to the villain, Max embraces the code. Hey! 
You were wrong. I'm not alone. Steel helps me jack off. So Max and Steel reunite, becoming Max Steel again. And then Max and Bobby Kotick fight. And I'm going to be honest, this fight scene isn't too bad. It's well choreographed, well shot. The pacing can be a little bit iffy. But overall, it's not bad. Too bad it's literally an hour and 13 minutes into the movie. Like I've been saying throughout the rest of this video, this movie literally meanders for like an hour. You don't get anything interesting until like late in the movie. So it's it's honestly not worth sitting through an hour of this movie just to get a 6 out of 10 fight scene. It's like I'm watching this movie commit suicide in front of me. So much potential, just dead. So then suddenly the military comes in, but then Bobby Kotick straight up jaw says them. Meanwhile, Max, who is a pussy little bitch, starts hiding. And then literally another flashback happens. I remember. And literally, all this new flashback is, is Max's dad looking at his son. Oh man, so emotional. So Max gets back up, he and Bobby fight a bit, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 ending fight scene. Let's put you on Reddit. And then Max does the super ultra mega cum sicko mode, which causes Bobby Kotick to Bruh. blow up and Max saves the day. Yeah. And then the mom comes in and turns out she was a good guy the whole time and still knew her the whole time. And then uh, more talking happens. Whoa, an epic climax talking! But I knew the Ultralinks had come for them, and I was afraid they would come for you too. So I did the only thing I could think of to protect you. I bought Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War on launch. So blah, 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 more talking happens, whatever. His mom then gives him a thing, and Max hallucinates his dad. You know, this would be an emotional moment if I cared anything about Max as a character. Cut to Sophia's house. Max is all like, man, I want sex yes. with you. They then make out for a little bit. And then Max leaves, and then Steel's all like, Play mode? Flight mode. So now Max Steel can fly, which would have been really convenient earlier in the movie. Go right. Let's go. Right. Let's go right. <laughs> and then the movie ends, and uh, that's about it. So that was Max Steel. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, that is the worst superhero film I've ever seen. It literally feels like a fan four stick too. The writing is uninteresting and boring. The story is predictable and by the numbers as hell. And aside from maybe Steel, I couldn't tell you anything about any character aside from what role they play in the story. Max is the protagonist. Bobby Kotick's the antagonist. Sophia's the love interest. It's very clear that this movie was made on a much smaller budget. So why they didn't just put more effort into the core story is beyond me. I think that the idea of a much smaller scale, more indie film like superhero film is an interesting one. Too bad this movie didn't even do that. So in conclusion, this film is cringe nay nay. And my one final question is, when's Max Steel 2? I'm waiting for it, baby. Metamorphosis begins. Oh God, my flesh is the form they promised me is great, but my transition shall be agonizing. Ah! Oh God, please kill me! Mian, I'm just a small femboy furry. I'm a floofy small bean. Also, um, uh, Alpha and Omega Five is next. J just want to let you know.